Hello everyone, this is Impulse, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial for the Gold Pan. This is a gold farm, plus it also brings you gas tears, gunpowder, magma cream, and the illustrious rotten flesh. So let me show you how it works. What we have in front of us is a smart shifting floor design. This particular one was done by JL2579. He basically uh, made improvements upon the one that I had released in the past by making it more compact and more resource friendly. And the premise of this is that when a mob spawns on this floor here, it will begin shifting back and forth until they fall through. Uh, have a platform down there for the mobs to land on. In the case of the zombie pigmen, they will die and their loot will get collected by a hopper minecart that's running underneath that floor and stored away automatically in a chest. The magma cubes will basically live the, through the fall and then start jumping, you know, pick a direction and jump in it until they run into these cactus and they'll just keep doing it over and over again until they kill themselves and their loot will get picked up much in the same way. Now the gas on the other hand work a little bit differently because they don't are, you know, they're not going to fall, they're not affected by gravity. We trap them in here by putting blocks into their head right here and it will actually suffocate them so you can see the second set of trip wires is specifically um, designed here for the gas killing and it's going to automatically kill the gas as soon as they spawn it's going to trip these into their head they'll suffocate and their loot will fall through the floor and get collected so now that I've explained how it works I'm going to show you how to build it but before I do that we have to figure out where we're going to build it well, we have two options here. The first choice is to build it in the nether, anywhere where you like. Typically what you want to do is find a big lava lake or something that's going to be easy to make a spawn proof perimeter. And that means, you know, going 144 directions out from where you're going to stand in all directions and basically half slabbing or covering with lava. Um, basically your standard mob proofing anywhere outside of where the trap's going to be. Your other option is to do what I'm doing here, and that's to actually go above the nether. And then all we have to do is use the ender pearl trick to get above the bedrock. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video in my channel that will explain how to do that. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So that's what I'm going to do here just to make it easier. And now I want to show you what materials you're going to need to build this thing. This top part represents basically each slice, uh, the materials you need to build each slice. This trap is a one wide tileable design. So basically if you want to make it 31 wide like I showed earlier, uh, you'll need to take the number of items here and times it by 31. And those are the numbers you're going to need to build it. In addition to that, you're also going to need these materials down here to basically set up the ends and the loot collection. Let me go ahead and grab that. And we're going to start off by stack jumping all the way up to level 223. So let's bring up F3, look at our Y coordinate, and we're going to basically stack jump our way all the way up until Y equals 223. Okay, I want you to Y223. at The next thing you want to do is build a platform 13 wide by however long your trap's going to be. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to build a 13 by 31 wide platform. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that our platform is done, let's set up our collection point. So what we're going to do is put a block there, chest, chest, just to give ourselves a nice double chest. And then you can take out that block there. And then we're going to put some hoppers in to feed the chest. One there, and then connect one to the side of that. And basically the cart will stop on that hopper and it will feed into that chest. Okay, so now we just need to set up a way for the system to know when to stop the cart long enough to empty its items into that chest. And the way we do that is simple. We're just going to put a block here that's going to sit a comparator on it. And in front of that, another block. Torch on the back of that, going into a block there. Repeater, going into another block. And that's it. So now that we have that set up, we can start putting down our rails. What you want to do is put powered rail on top of that hopper there, and another one in front of that. Then switch to your regular rails. We're just going to run them all the way along here. 
until you get almost to the end. And when you're two blocks from the end, switch to your powered rail and then back to your regular to, to make the turn and then power it again and then back to regular, run it all the way down. And we're basically going to repeat this pattern on each side until we get all the way to the end. Okay, and when you get to the end here, you want to end with two powered rails. And then on the edge of that, go ahead and put a block there. Now the next thing we need to do is power all these. So you have two choices. You can either put levers underneath them, or if it's easier for you and you have the resources, you can change these blocks underneath uh, to redstone blocks. For this, I'll just do the levers. We'll just come along the bottom here, power all these rails, and do the same thing on the other side. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw our minecart with a hopper on here. Pop it on there. You should see it start to go. We'll make sure that it makes its way all the way around. And when it gets to the end of the track, it should hit that block and just return. Perfect. Okay, so now let's test the item drop off. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some items in the hopper minecart here. We'll push it over to the edge, and what you should see is it stop, and basically it's unloading now. And as long as it's unloading, it will stay stopped. As soon as it gets all of them unloaded, it will take back off. So let's check the chest. You can see all 13 rails made it. That's working perfectly. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is create our floor that the pigmen and magma cubes are going to fall onto. The floor of death, we can call it. And to do that, we simply place half slabs above all these rails. And you just have to do that, cover basically the same exact floor area as you built before. So in my case, 13 by 31. And basically just go along and cover up the entire thing with half slabs. As you can see, these are actually the bottom half of the block, not the top half. And you want to do that way just to make sure that you don't have pigment spotting on these. So let me go ahead and cover this whole thing. Okay, so now that we've half slabbed the entire surface above the track, yeah, you can see I also put half slabs above this mechanism here just to make sure that we don't get any spawns. I did the same thing with the block sticking out at the other end. The next step is to basically pillar up, and we want to get to Y coordinate 249. So we'll go ahead and pillar up off of this hopper here. Okay, and now we're at 249. Next step is to place a piston facing in on that, glass in front of it, and then we're going to put trapdoors under that. In order to do that, you're going to need to put a couple blocks below it. Put your trapdoors, open them up, just like so. And then we're going to create our floor. We need some slabs. And the floor is basically going to go on the top half here, six wide. There we go. And on the other side of that, we're going to do more fence gates. So we need the blocks underneath it to put them down. Open them up, get rid of those blocks. And then glass on the other side of that. And then what we want is a space. And then we're going to put a piston basically in here. So there's our space. And then Check that out. Looks like we have the same thing on both sides, except we've got the space there, so it can allow this to push one way and then push back. And pistons can only push 12 blocks, so let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is put in the redstone that's going to allow this to shift back and forth. To do that, simple. You want to come over here to behind this piston, put a placeholder block in, redstone, two blocks down, take that middle one out, put in a sticky piston there, and then on top of here we're going to put a comparator. Behind that comparator we need to have two hoppers basically facing into each other, so put one down there, shift click into each other, and now they're facing into each other. Let's go ahead and throw an item in there. We'll just take, uh, I'll take some string, and you can see it starts the clock basically here. And to control that clock, we're going to put a sticky piston on top with a redstone block. And that should shut that off. And then behind the sticky piston here, we're going to do a regular block. 
and we need to put a top half half slab down right there with a repeater on top of that set to one tick behind that we're going to put a block and behind that block we put a tripwire hook and that's that for that side now we head on over to the other side basically repeat the process so we'll do it again here placeholder block block of redstone two blocks take out the middle one sticky piston need our comparator again two hoppers facing into each other item inside starts that clock again sticky piston block a redstone block behind that half slab at the top half of the block repeater and this repeater is actually going to have a four tick delay on it block on the side of that tripwire hook and now we just need to connect the tripwires together so put some string between them there we go and let's give it a test there we go you can see the floor is shifting back and forth and when a mob stands on it they will fall through So as I mentioned before, this thing is tileable, so basically to finish off the platform, all you need to do is copy the same block, and the easiest way to do it is just to basically run it down like this, pick a block, and you know, whatever is easiest for you as you're building, run it down, basically clone it, and then you can come back and do the same thing here. So I'll do this for all 31 slices, and I'll see you in a sec. When you're done, you should have something that looks like this. The next thing we need to do is create the gas killer. To do this, we pick the side with no air block between the piston and the glass. You see on this side there's an air block in between. So we'll go to this right side here, and on the first set of fence gates, we'll put a block above the tripwire. On top of that, sticky piston, block in front of that, and a tripwire hook under that. On the side with the air block between the piston and the glass, we're going to go to the left set of fence gates, put the block above the trip uh, string there with a sticky piston on top of that. Again, block there, tripwire hook there. And then we simply connect these tripwire hooks together. And as you can see, there should be one, two, three, four, five blocks of space in between. And when these extend, it will reduce that down to three, which is enough to suffocate the gas. So again, this is a tileable design, so we just need to copy this pattern all the way down. So I'll do this 30 more times. Okay, now that that's done, the next thing we're going to want to do is cover up all spawnable spaces outside of this floor with half slabs. So basically there, there, don't need to worry about the glass or the pistons there. They can't spawn inside there. We'll go ahead and cover the top of this and basically do that on both sides all the way down. Okay, and when you're done half slabbing, you should have something that looks like this. And finally, we'll move on to the last step, which is the magma cube killer. Basically, all it is is a fence of cactus that goes around the perimeter of this thing. And to do this, it's pretty simple. You just go to the corners here, and we'll knock that out. Sand, cactus, four high. Do the same thing here. Sand, cactus, four high. And then you basically just alternate. So the easiest way I found to do this is to just create a row of blocks, two wide, just like so. And then you can just alternate your sand like this. And then place your cactus for high. I'll just go ahead and place them here. And basically you're going to want to do that around the entire perimeter. And you can see here where the corners are, these actually meet. And that's the reason why I did an odd number width. So I recommend you do that so that your corners meet like that. that makes it nice and clean. So I'll go ahead and do the whole perimeter and I'll be back when I'm finished. Okay, so now that that's done, we can go ahead and remove the excess blocks. Let's go around the perimeter and basically these ones here, we're just going to knock out.
Okay, and then on the inside, we're going to go ahead and put these half slabs down to make sure that we prevent spawning. Okay, and there you go. Should be all finished. Let's go ahead and take it for a test run. I'm going to stand up on here. Basically made a little platform. You want to, if you're doing the above the bedrock deal, you want to get yourself up as high as you can go. I'm at 252 on the Y coordinate here. And of course I am more than 24 blocks away from the spawning pad. You want to be somewhere in between you know, 25 blocks to 144 blocks within you know, the single, you know, every single spawning space. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what we get. You can see immediately we got lots of pigmen raining down. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes. We didn't get any gas spawns yet, but they are extremely rare. They will happen over time if you AFK long enough. Let's check out, see what we got so far. And you can see we got just over a stack of gold nuggets. Same thing with the rotten flesh. And like I said, you know the, the gas and the magma cubes are, are rare spawns, but they will happen given time. And it will collect those as well. So that wraps it up for this tutorial of the gold pan. Oh, just before we ended, just in time, you get to see a ghast. Loud as can be. There you saw I crushed him. And don't know if he dropped a ghast here. Tack. Looks like nothing up here. Hopefully that means it fell through. Oh, we have some magma cube as well. Didn't see those guys, but it's possible the cart picked it up already or it didn't drop a... May not have dropped one. Oh, the cart's dropping stuff off right now. You can see it's coming in. And as soon as it's done, it will roll away. There it went. So no guests here, unfortunately, but at least you got a chance to see the gas die before the video ended. And if you found this video useful, please remember to give me a like, comment, subscribe if you're not already one of my subscribers. And with that said, see you again next time. Take it easy, everyone.